All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back to Mask Big Idea Number Two. All right, so previously uh, we were talking about masks and we talked about the basic idea that we manipulate the masks all over the place and what happens when we steal bits from the host portion or steal bits from the network portion. And in that video, I posited the question, why would we do that? Well, now it's time to answer that question. So why do we need to manipulate the mask? Well, the short answer that I gave you at the time was to simply control or manage address space and to shrink routing tables. Okay, but a little bit better answer can be found in the 2006 RFC 4632 entitled Classless Interdomain Routing or CIDR. That's the slash notation that we see at the end of, of network addresses. Uh, so this was the Internet Address Assignment and Aggregation Plan. So to quote from that RFC, this memo discusses the strategy for address assignment of the existing 32-bit IPv4 address space with a view toward conserving the address space and limiting the growth of global routing state. All right, so the basic problem is that we're running out of address space running out of IP version 4 addresses themselves. And routing tables are getting big. Now, if you're in a networking class, you're used to a couple of entries in a routing table. But the global internet routing tables, those routers that are out, you know, running um, in ISP networks, between ISPs, things of that sort, they have hundreds of thousands of routes. And it takes a lot of memory to, to process all of that. But we can go back way before 2006. If we think back long enough, we can go back to 1993 to RFC 1918 or 1519. Uh, it says it had become clear that the first two of these problems are likely to become critical within the next one to three years. Well, what problems are we talking about here? I'll get to that in a sec. We can go back even a little farther to 1338, where the title of the document was called Supernetting instead. Okay, so it turns out that all, both of these were obsoleted by 4632, which was a clarifying thing. But we get the language and the problem statements from the earlier RFCs. Okay, so what are the problems that we're talking about? Well, number one is the exhaustion of the Class B network address space. It turns out that Class B address space is this wonderfully sized address space of about 65,536 addresses. And so it was that sweet spot in between small Class C networks and large Class, uh, class A's, uh, and there weren't very many of them. So they were running out rather quickly, and it became apparent that before we knew it, this popular address space was going to be gone. The other problem was that the routing tables in the core internet routers, remember that we're going back to, you know, in the early RFCs, 1992, 1993. Uh, by the way, that's when the, about the time the first internet browsers and everything else became popular. So there was this real explosion in the early 1990s of internet access and folks joining the party and all of that. So routers were being tasked with getting to all these destinations and the routing tables were getting enormous. And then eventually the third problem was the 32-bit uh, address space was going to be gone entirely. Forget class B, the whole thing was going to be going to be gone. All right, so if you'll read along with me for a sec, the solution that the community created was to deprecate the class A, B, and C network address ass assignment system. Now, that's the class full address system that you start learning about because that's, you know, it's where we always start. It's the easiest way to understand things. But that's gone, right? We don't use that anymore. In favor of using classless hierarchical blocks of IP version 4 or IP addresses referred to as prefixes. The assignment of prefixes is intended to roughly follow the underlying internet topology so that aggregation can be used to facilitate the scaling of the global routing system. 
One implication of this strategy is that prefix assignment and aggregation is generally done according to the provider-subscriber relationships, since that's how the internet topology is determined anyway. All right, so fast forward to where we are now, right? IANA is the, is the organization on top of everything that sort of keeps track of all the internet address space. So that's IANA. And then the governing body of that is ICANN. You can go to both these websites. They dole out the global IP address space to the regional internet registries. Several of these exist for global sections. And then they further divide the internet space, the internet address space, down to the ISPs, which finally handed out to lowly folks like you and me. So it is very hierarchical in nature. And eventually, the ISPs dole out just what customers need. So in the end, the ISPs are control, in control of the address space. So what's the big idea that we're talking about? Well, it's growth, right? Crazy popularity of, of the internet led to lots of folks joining the party. And that might be networks, it might be individuals, it was businesses, it was government entities, it was everybody wanted to join the internet. Everybody wanted to be connected. So you can imagine that we've got all of this address space that's being consumed, all of the public, public address space that's being consumed, and the routers have to be able to forward to all of these destinations. That's why we manipulate the mask. It helps us use or assign address space based on need. So the ISPs control that and allows us to aggregate routes to make routing tables smaller. You can collapse a very, very large number of routes to a very, very uh, small number of routes by using aggregation that you accomplish via manipulation of the mask. Well, as for number three, which we never really got to, right? How about a little IP version 6 or network address translation? Turns out those have been, especially network address translation, very successful in keeping us away from address exhaustion. Well, that's it for big idea number two. We manipulate the masks in the, the, uh, via the bits to change the address space. Well, why do we do that? We allows us to aggregate routes and make routing tables smaller. It also permits us to assign address space based on what we need rather than the very wasteful classful address space. By the way, we ran out of address space a long time ago. But if you want to know a little bit more about masks, I'll add the list to the, uh, to the notes below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like if I helped. And may your packets always reach their destinations, especially if you aggregate.